Martin and welcome to another brand new edition for Astronomy for Beginners and today I'm going to do a DIY guide on, um, on cleaning a, a typical refracted telescope. Now I have my 80mm uh, lunt and believe it or not she's due to be cleaned. Uh, the objective lens is looking a bit uh, tatty, in other words uh, there's moisture, uh, dust marks you name it, this has never been cleaned for some time and uh, the, the optics and the pollen the springs is coming up is starting to deteriorate the performance of the telescope and I'm starting to get some weird strange artifacts uh, dust bunnies and, and stuff on the images so that is a good indication to if you're uh, owner of these type of telescopes if you start seeing artifacts in your uh, images and even though you've blown off the dust off them using a, uh, a blower a air bulb uh, and you're still getting some artifacts then maybe it, you could ask yourself a question is maybe you need to start actually cleaning the telescope now the ejected lens on the uh, ED glass are very high quality and you've got to be extra careful particularly on the, uh, the, the high relative reflective uh, coatings on there uh, because of the very precision glass uh, with these type of telescopes you really need to be a little bit, a little bit more delicate compared to another you know, a normal acromat uh, refractor there are so many different ways to clean a, a refractor telescope but I am going to demonstrate my uh, way of cleaning a, a typical refractor and I will show you step by step what sort of things you're going to need to clean the objective lens but one caution I must advise you is when you're cleaning optics particularly an ED glass or a triplet glass refractor is ensure that you buy it is better to get the best quality cleaning uh, equipment for the telescope now do not use cheap glass cleaners or anything like that or using uh, your typical glass cleaner for your windows uh, do not use anything like that you need to buy specific camera lenses or eyepiece uh, cleaning solutions do not use uh, a normal uh, cloth trying to clean it as if you're going to clean a normal uh, set of pane glass on the windows of your house for example these optics are a lot more refined and buying cheap uh, stuff that's going to do more harm to your optical um, telescopes uh, than anything so basically this guy what I'm going to do is going to show you the variety of equipment you're going to need to do the job also to add on that is as I stressed before there's a lot of your guys out there who are, are absolutely um, will always like to have their optics pristine quality in other words you like to have your optics perform 100% all the time every day you, you use it and making sure it's gleaming but believe me when you're having optics of this uh, getting too extensive on the cleaning and I mean there is people out there if there's a slight bit of dust in there they will clean it to the full maximum and then what you're doing is you're doing more damage than good and what you're doing is if you're doing too much cleaning you have more chances of wiping off all that precious coatings in there than you are actually going to leave it just uh, sort of dirty now this uh, refractor has not been cleaned for a good three years so that's how often I clean my telescopes is I always clean my telescopes at a neat basis in other words if your images are starting to get effective and you're starting weird artifacts or and and you get dirt, dirt fingerprints on there or anything like that that will deter the optics of the telescope then by all means clean it but do not get obsessive obsessive in it and clean every single time on just a hint of dust. Hint of dust can be blown away with a, a, a blow-up bulb, all right, and you just blow it away. All right. Nine 
9 out of 10, as long as you keep your lens cap, caps when not in use, it's fine, when in storage, keep it in a nice uh, case if you've got one, if not, refer to some of my, uh, my guide on uh, uh, making your own DIY case for your telescope, I uh, demonstrate on that, and also, another top tip is, um, if you start using this telescope and it chews up with moisture, bring it in the house, let it warm in the house uh, warm atmosphere, all right, and let the uh, the dew will start to dry up. It is very crucial that you let your optics dry out before you start putting dust caps on. I know it sounds crazy, but even for a reflecting telescope, you still do do the exact same. Get, bring it in the house, let it warm up until all the condensation has been removed. Once it's all dried out, then put your dust caps. And what you're doing is, is you're making sure that your optics are perfectly dry. If you cover them and they've got the condensation, you're more likely to trap them. all this moisture. And what moisture will do is, once it gets trapped between those uh, lens elements, it will start to form a fungus and this fungus is like a form of moss will grow in between the lens cell uh, and basically will build up and it will create all these specks of mould within the glass and it is extremely hard to get them off and so it's very important that you let your optics dry out before you start putting on lens caps and all that, very crucial uh, not a lot of people not know about this, but it is out there and people are renowned to say, well, I've got this weird, strange uh, stuff that's on my lens and I can't get it off. If it is the mould, you'll know about it because it's the stuff that won't remove, even with lens solutions. You know, when you start using lens cleaning products and it won't come off, uh, basically what's happened, the water has got in trapped in between the, uh, the elements of the lens and basically what you're going to need to require is take it to a proper telescope technician or um, a, a foot company that will be able to strip out the lens element accurately and professionally get them cleaned. Uh, will cost a lot of money but for the sake of just letting the optics dry out just a, you know, a few minutes up to about half an hour, that's all it takes, chances of Minimising that effect, you'll, by doing that process, every time you do it, get into the habit of just looking after the optics and you will never have that problem at all. all right? And I've had a lot of telescopes over the years and I've never had that problem due to the fact I just basically let the optics dry out in a nice warm room. You can use an air dryer to speed up the process, but be careful when you use an air dryer carefully just blow it on a low setting and just wave it in and out in and out until it dissipates do not put the heat constantly onto the lens because what also will happen is if you let the heat build up and it dramatically changes the the, the temperature you might likely to crack the glass element particularly in nights where some nights are very cold especially in the winter you do not want to shock that glass so basically, if you are going to use a hairdryer, just gradually, just low heat, wave it about, and it will go. Personally, I just leave it lying in a warm room and let the heat just dissipate and get rid of that condensation, right? And again, by doing that, every time you do it, you, you stop using your scope, do it as a standard uh, sort of practice, so that you will never have this mold problem. But... There's a lot of people out there disregard that, put the lens cap on and they're off the tot. Now obviously if you're, you've gone out uh, on a remote place, say like you're, you're camping elsewhere in somewhere very nice and you use a telescope, unfortunately that can be a bit difficult because whilst you're packing away um, there's no way of drying out the optics. But however there are portable air dryers that you can buy, you know, for not much money. You just get a portable air dryer, connect it to the car battery, and just let it just um, warm up that way. And just use the car battery 
and the air dryer to just blow up the hair. So there are ways to do it. Once it's dried, then put it back as normal into the storage case and you're fine. And that's all it takes. So, but again, there are so many different methods of cleaning a refractor. Um, again, there isn't a lot of information out on the internet. You know, there, are, uh, there are one or two videos out there, which are good. But again, they all seem to be using cheaper uh, methods of cleaning. But I'm just going to use, um, if you've got a refractor like of this type of quality, of an ED variant or a triplet, then I would recommend using uh, decent uh, optical cleaning uh, agents and all. Also, because the refractor is a closed tube design, basically the lens element is basically just uh, sealed to that point, and once you put a caps on, it's closed. Uh, as I mentioned before on my other guides, if you refer to and make yourself a DOI desiccant cap, believe it or not, uh, to reduce the, the mould uh, from happening from inside the tube and, getting, and get moisture from that end inside, I would use one of these. And now, refer to my guide because I basically uh, show you how to make one for yourself. But there are companies out there, telescope uh, retailers, will sell them. There aren't many of them that sell them, but it is particularly important. Because basically all it is, is a, an inch and a quarter, or a two inch um, format eyepiece uh, cap. And inside this cap, it's, it's vented, and in there, there's like silicon beads. Now the silicon beads basically draw all the moisture inside the tube, and will prevent mold from happening. However, they cost a lot of money for what they are. Because uh, one, you've got to pay for the beads, which usually you can get them as separate. I've got them as separate because beads uh, that I get is that I can recharge them. So basically, once they're used up, uh, basically they'll change colour to a white colour or pale white colour to indicate that it's used up and they don't do any purpose. So I stick them in the oven, 150 degrees, on, on a no setting fan on the oven, wait for about a good half hour, and basically these will turn back to orange colour, and we'll, uh, then I can use them again. You can get the silicon bag bags, but unfortunately I don't like using them, because there's one, there's no indication on when they are spent, and also, secondly, is uh, trying to put them in the, the oven, uh, the more chances of you actually damaging the silica uh, beads and setting the actual bag on fire. So it's not recommended that I get the bags, because usually with the bags, uh, if they're spent, you have to pay for another set of these and then do it. Uh, just get the beads. Uh, the cap itself can be manufactured um, from uh, many of these telescope companies. But there aren't many out there, so basically, with this cap, is it's all it is is just an inch and a quarter, two inch, and it's just got a screw cap that you can take off from here, like so, and you can fill up your uh, new beads in there, silica beads, and then basically, uh, same again. When the telescope's not in use, you place the cap inside the inch and a quarter or two inch. And then you just tighten it up and seal it up that way. And basically it will stop any moisture getting trapped in between and, uh, and preventing um, the build-up of mould, which you don't want. So, again, enough on the, the thing so far. So basically what we're going to do now, we're going to have a closer look on the equipment uh, that I use, which I think is the best, I think, for any uh, ED or triplet refractors. These can, uh, this uh, process can be used for acromats as well. Uh, again, for the guys who, who can't afford uh, a telescope of this quality, acromats are just as good. Um, and then what we're going to do now, I'm going to show you uh, the stuff I'm going to use and then I'm going to show you the process on cleaning uh, this uh, refractor. So. We'll take a close look. Here's my telescope, and I'm going to show you uh, the optics on 
on how bad it can be. Now, as you can see here, if you look closely, the optics don't look too bad, to be honest with you. Uh, I've seen a lot worse, but uh, believe it or not, um, I do have uh, a lot of debris and moisture that's got in the lens and it's basically formed these marks, watermarks, now also the camera hasn't really done any justice here but there are lots of debris there and uh, and it's affecting my images so I checked my camera on my CCDs and all that and I've got no dust bunnies on my CCDs but I just keep getting some some weird reflections and weird uh, markings of my images now I haven't cleaned this telescope for three years which is quite some time and this is probably the first clean now uh, before we begin I'm just going to highlight uh, this hairdryer if you're going to a remote site away from home and you want to uh, try and get rid of the condensation of the uh, of the uh, lenses on your tele telescopes then go to uh, a lot of good astronomy retailers like uh, Rover Valley Optics and uh, and you've got Tring Astronomy will also sell you one of these this is a, a portable hair dryer all right and it gives out just the amount of heat so you don't shock the glass and again it can be powered by a 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter attached to your car so you can then use the car battery and use this hair dryer to, um, to slowly evaporate the, the, the lens that's become full of moisture so once it's dried out you can then put your uh, your lens cap on there and you won't have to borrow, worry about moisture um, and mould getting in between the uh, lens elements so it's a very handy little uh, gadget, costs around about a region of 15 to 20 pounds and, uh, and it's perfect. I've had this for some, some years and it works just fine. However, um, you, can get an, you can use a normal hairdryer but this one seems to give out just the right amount of heat. Bear in mind, because it's a cigarette lighter and it runs off a car battery, my advice is uh, when you're using it is to basically crank up, crank the engine on your car and let the air engine keep the charge because if you use the air dryer uh, directly as it is with no power uh, to, so you have no engine running on your car you will quick, quickly run out of battery juice because this is a thirsty beast and it will drain your car battery in no time. So top tip, keep your uh, engine running whilst you're using this device. So, as I mentioned before, I haven't cleaned for three years, which is some time ago, and it's due for a clean. Before we start on anything, is certain precautions is, uh, when you're doing any cleaning involved, just make sure you've got a nice clean, cleanish surface so you can work to and also uh, just wash your hands because believe it or not if you don't wash your hands and you've got dirt and grease or grime um, we'll get well if you start cleaning the lens cell uh, you might happen to just uh, put a lot of dirt onto your lens so wash your hands and also another safe precaution for all you guys that are married uh, just take your ring so remove any jewelry so you don't scratch the the coatings so very important. Another thing is uh, you can use latex gloves. Um, they are handy and they will also help to uh, stop you from damaging the optics when you're cleaning. So you can use um, latex gloves. You just put them on just for demonstration purposes. So, but you don't have to have them. But it's just a nice little um, another precaution, like so. So, what we'll do is uh, we're just going to describe to you certain parts uh, of cleaning devices. There'll be certain uh, cleaning devices that I will show you, which I use, and I recommend uh, advice for your guys to uh, purchase. 
again this is why I, I think this is the top uh, cleaning stuff you can get at the moment now bear in mind there's a lot of um, good optical or camera shops out there and they will show you uh, complete kits like this now this is just this is a really old uh, cleaning optical kit but this is just to show you an example uh, I don't think these are available anymore um, I don't think they even sell these anymore but they're all cleaning kits and they all seem to be the, exactly the same sort of layout now the cleaning kits you usually pay around about 10 to about 25 pounds tops and the kit usually consists of you'll get um, you won't get these ex uh, screws as a, as, a, as a part of the kit but what you will get is you'll get some lens tissue um, you'll get some um, a bottle of lens cleaner you know a small bottle of that a camel hair brush which has a blower type and a few uh, cloths you know lens cloths however on a basic kit these are the sort of uh, items that you will get normally for a basic uh, lens cleaning uh, optical uh, camera kit they are good but they're not brilliant and the reason why I'm saying that is that your lens tissues are usually quite good uh, they do clean very well and the solution is is okay however um, when you do get these kits the blow brush is a bit on the weak side and um, to be honest with you it will clean it will brush and it will remove some of the debris but it doesn't remove them very well so the blow brush is a bit yeah a bit on the crap side but it does work it's it's, it's better than nothing I suppose and and the cloths I'm not a big fan of, fan of these type of cloths these are like uh, your typical your glasses type cloths they uh, they are okay uh, but time after time after they've been used uh, a few times they tend to get a little bit dusty or, and the little bits come off and and basically get onto the uh, the objective lens uh, unfortunately you you can't really clean these uh, through the uh, washing machine so really you use them a few times and then once they start getting dirty you need to start binning them all right and again they're not brilliant the lens tissue are basically uh, a one use um, only so when you use uh, a set of lens tissue with a bit of cleaning solution you must use the cleaning solution when you use lens tissue they do a really good job but it's a one use one application so one wipe then change and uh, fold the, the tissue over and then wipe again across uh, again use once once used don't use it again just replace it with more lens tissue however very good for cleaning uh, objective lenses and eyepieces and yeah, the standard little lens uh, cleaning solution you get is basically isopropyl alcohol with mixed in with a little bit of like a, a detergent in there and, and just water. That's all it is. It's just um, a, a little mixture of this solution. And it's okay. It does remove a lot of uh, grime and dirt. However, with these uh, cheap cleaning kits out there, which are okay, the lens cleaning solution tends to leave smear marks. So no matter how much you try and clean them, uh, you always get a residue of smear marks. And sometimes uh, the solution can be a bit too aggressive for some certain optics. Now, especially if you're going to use it for a triplet Apple refractor, if you're the guys who can afford mega bucks on a scope like that, then I wouldn't use a cheap lens cleaner. All right, so anyway, what I would make suggestion is that, yeah, lens cleaning kits are fine for mainly, I would recommend for modest eyepieces and reasonable quality um, telescopes like an Acromat refractor, for example, or your Maxitoffs. However, these lens cleaning kits are only used for refractors and and Schmidt Cassocrines and Maxisofts only. Do not use these lens kits on Newtonians. All right, these are not used for cleaning mirrors. 
all right so never ever use any of these cleaning kits to lens cleaning kits on mirrored telescopes they do not work you will damage the coatings because the optics are very sensitive and you really need if you've got a Newtonian then please I advise you to look at my cleaning the optics uh, of a Newtonian telescope video guide which consists of two parts and I show you how to clean one of those properly so refer to that guide on my YouTube channel so anyway I'm going to show uh, a variety of my uh, equipment and first off we're going to start off is you've probably seen loads of these these are the lens pens now just to give you a prime warning uh, there are a lot of lens pens variants out there and they consist of very various prices and and various um, product names and brands however uh, I would recommend purely getting the actual official lens pen stated on there all right this is an actual firm and do not buy any knockoffs from um, eBay or cheap places that are because they are going to be cheap quality um, they won't have the proper camel hair 100% camel's hair brush all right like like this one all right and it won't have the proper carbon fiber cleaning tip at the end as well and a lot of these knockoffs uh, will probably work for a cheap end sort of crappy optical devices but if you're going to use it on optical um, objective lenses of your telescopes then I would buy a proper lens pen you can get these from Brother Valley Optics or you can get them from Tring Astronomy really good astronomy retailers uh, again they cost not much money probably £10 at the most but do not buy buy them from cheap knockoffs on eBay because there's a lot out there and there's been a lot of reports of these lens pens, cheap lens pens, being used uh, and damaging uh, telescope optics. So buy a proper brand. Now, okay, the lens pen's great for um, just minor cleaning. Basically, um, it's great for um, removing, because the carbon fibre tip there, that's great for removing a bit of moisture. But they're okay for eyepieces mainly for this on that side. But the bit I'm concerned and more interested is with the lens pen is it is a camel airbrush. And this is a very good camel's airbrush. And this is better than your standard uh, cleaning kits that you can get. This is a lot better. This will remove a lot of debris. But usually this device is the second um, stage of cleaning. Now we're we'll going to the first part of cleaning. Now, if your optics on your refractor is dusty, then first point of call is before you do any uh, cleaning, get yourself one of these, which is a uh, a blower bulb or hurricane blower, also known as. Again, you can get them from Rubber Valley Optics and Tring Astronomy. Cost around about five to six pounds, and this is basically very similar to uh, the blower brush that you've seen in the cheap cleaning kits. But because it's a hurricane blower, it, when you squeeze it, it gives you an ample lot of air. And you need that lot of air to get rid of a lot of this uh, minute dust. Now, this is the first part of cleaning uh, for any uh, optical devices. is If you've got dust, 9 out of 10, you just give it a quick, quick blow like this with this camera, uh, with this... Uh, Blower, hurricane blower and it will get most of the dust off and that's probably the most you're gonna get and once you've uh, happy with that you can then just proceed uh, just using your brush all right so those are the first parts of cleaning your uh, optical devices now again A lot of people like prefer to use lens cleaning tissue. I prefer to get some of these. Now, 
These are Border Planetarium Optical Wonder Cloths. These are brilliant. Now, these are high quality uh, scratch free cloths. And the good beauty about these, they're okay, they're expensive, they cost around about five to six pounds. It sounds a lot for a cloth. But the good thing is, these cloths, uh, you can wash them. Normal wash, 40 degrees, and you can reuse them and they last for ages and ages and ages. Fantastic cloths. Uh, they're wonderful. They do not leave any traces of dust uh, or any sort of bits of fragments from the fabric. And they will not leave any smear marks. They are very good and I would seriously recommend you getting from uh, a good optical retailer. Again, Rob Valley, Dring Astronomy will sell these. Very good, decent sized cloth and you can use them on both sides. However, these cloths are okay for deep cleaning. Uh, so basically if you've got uh, heavy grime or fingerprints or you're starting to get moisture spots on your on your uh, your lens element on your objective lens this is the cloth I would use and again a good indication um, you can use these quite a few times but I would seriously recommend that when you use a cleaning cloth if you use it once or twice after an application of cleaning or for example um, I mean eyepiece you can get away with about three or four applications but with objective lens, if you cleaned it once and you're going to clean it again on another telescope, for example, then twice I will start thinking about throwing this into the washing machine and give it a good clean. And then, then you can use it again, lay it dry. Again, 40 degrees, you can wash them. Um, when they're wet, leave them hang to dry. Do not put them in the dryer, all right, because it will damage the, the fabric. So once you've finished using them, hang them to dry outside or summer or peg them out and let the let it dry uh, normally once dried then you can just reuse the the cloth again again as you noticed um, with the used cloths I've got here I've kept the original pack now the reason why I kept the original pack is that it helps to protect um, the the cloth from uh, foreign uh, debris or dust so I always like to keep the original packs so that when the cloth is not in use, make sure it's dry first before you put it back and then put it inside its original packet. It just gives it a bit of protection and so you don't get any fragments of bits of sand that gets in there because when you do use the cloth and there's sand fragments in there, you're going to scratch the lens of your optical device. So top tip, keep the original packets if you can. If you can't put them in a nice tight uh, con storage container like a, uh, a lunch box or something or something that will keep away from dust and, and whatever so you can put them nice and safe in there and then finally the last uh, thing I'm going to show you is in conjunction with those cloths they only work uh, reasonably well you can use them with any lens cleaning solution but the best and number one optical uh, cleaning solution that I have found, believe it or not, I've had this for years and years, and it's, it's basically the, the Barda Planetarium Optical Wonder Fluid. It's a, an alcohol solution, cleaning solution, with a few additives. Now, this is being recommended from a lot of uh, good uh, astronomy retailers and, and a lot of uh, people that use it and I've used this quite a few times on all my telescopes and I've had no problems it's a very good cleaning solution it is expensive I, I'm completely aware of it but it does cost a region of 10 to 15 pounds a bottle it is horrendous uh, there are cleaning solutions out there that are quite good but I found that this is probably the best one I would recommend again it's a hundred milliliter bottle it's not a lot but the good thing is it's a very good cleaning solution and it does clean a lot of dirt grime and oils you name it it cleans a lot it also uh, 
it's got an additive in there that will stop um, basically um, pollen so if you get pollen fragments in there it will stop the, the pollen fragments it will get rid of all the pollen stains and also it will uh, remove uh, some of the the, the mould so if you've got uh, any hint of because um, obviously lens elements can get really dirty any ingress of germs or bacteria that gets in between the lens element and all that this can remove some of that uh, again only on the outside of the the lens uh, coating so you basically what it does is it will also give you a protective barrier so basically what this does is you clean the stuff on your lens op optical thing and it will give out an, an antibacterial uh, film so it will give it some protection also protect on the exotic coatings on really really expensive triple apple refractors so again uh, this can be used on any refractor telescope no matter what if you own an, an ED or an apple or, or an acromat but again it's worth the money and as I mentioned before is if you're go if you're going to spend a lot of money on your telescopes then buy the best cleaning products available for your uh, telescope no matter what grade or quality it is believe me I've had these uh, I've had these uh, cleaning solutions and these items and this is just this is my this is my cleaning uh, package this is all you need and believe me this is the only items you need to clean your optics of your refractive telescope again they could be used to clean eyepieces um, and again it's only four items and I've used them they're the ones I use the most Unfortunately, I don't have lens tissue, but you don't really need a lens tissue when you're using these it's type of cloths. And believe it or not, that's all I use, that's all I require, and it does everything. Again, uh, I mentioned about this solution, because it's 100 uh, milliliters. I've had this four years now. It's not even half full. So, as you see here, um, it just shows me it lasts a long time this stuff so it is worth the money I mean you only need to use a little bit of this stuff you don't need to use a lot and I'll show you now as I progress on cleaning the uh, my uh, Lunt 80mm ED refractor so this kit this kit here you know comprises of a cloth your lens pen your hurricane blower and your optical uh, wonder fluid uh, round about, you pay around about 30 to 40 pounds for the whole lot. Uh, it sounds a bit expensive for cleaning um, items, but believe me, there are a lot more expensive cleaning um, uh, kits out there that you can buy for a lot more money. And these seem to work for me. Uh, many uh, astronomers recommend uh, this setup, and, and that's all I use. So what we're going to do now is we're going to um, get rid of some of the items out of the way. We're going to put on my uh, my latex gloves. Uh, I've got a bit of a fetish with them, so I'm just going to put them on. Again, uh, I'm not. You don't have to have these gloves, but they will help you to uh, reduce you getting your filthy hands. The hand grease getting onto your, uh, your lens element of your telescope. So basically, we've got got my ED lunt. Now I'm going to cover a few certain things, uh, both on the cleaning stages. Now remember, make sure your optics are nice and dry. You don't want to be doing this when the optics are full of moisture. Another thing is, when you're cleaning that side, make sure you've got a, some kind of protection of dust cap on the other end, because you don't want to get any dust at the other side. So, again, we're going to use a blow brush, and as you can see, with the blow brush, 
I'm going to blow away the remaining dust as possible. Now you could do this as long as you want, but the best the best policy is is you want to try and t minimize by touching the glass less off less often. And most of the time, if you check on strong light and just double check if there's still fragments of dust, just to keep doing it. If there isn't, uh, if you tend to find some dust on the edges or they not appear to be moving, then after a few blows, quit that and then get yourself a good old uh, lens pen, a good one, and then second stage is vigorously, carefully, just brush off the dust, okay? like so. Yeah, you can do it vigorously to provide you don't push on too hard, you don't need to press it on too hard but just nice good long strokes like so and usually that's usually, if it's all clear all the dust that's fine okay and that's all, that's all fine. Unfortunately with the angle of the lens and all that I still have fragments of um, moisture in there. Now I'm only going to show this as a demonstration purposes so really I'm going to show you to clean on using the optical wonder fluid but another top tip and a lot of uh, video guides uh, or, or on YouTube there's a lot of videos on YouTube that do not describe this. Now, now I'm going to highlight this now there is occasions, now after the quick blowing of the hurricane blower and using the camel brush you'll probably find that there might be some dust particles that appears to be not moving at all. Now don't get me wrong, you think you're removing it, you might be, it might be something that's got dislodged in something in that. Now the top tip that I found that it could be some dust particles from the inside. In other words, uh, on the lens element itself, on the other side, there may be uh, some dust particles that's got in somehow. So, if you do have that problem, you basically remove the cap. And what I would suggest is with the hurricane blower, uh, ideally you can uh, blow it tilting the uh, telescope lens and then try and and trying to blow the, uh, the dust off from the other side however that might not work because the, 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 the actual the nozzle on the camel hair brush is not long enough so what I would do is I would get some kind of straw a long piece of straw just just Quite, just about this big or something that's that's not going to damage you're not going to damage the objects but it's going to give you a bit closer towards the back end of the objective lens so fit a straw at the back and what that will do is it will extend the nozzle piece so that you can get to at the other end and then you've got more chances of removing some of that debris off um, you may need to remove uh, the inch and a quarter holder if it has one um, so basically extend the uh, the, the telescope um, opening just that little bit more so if we just do just slacken that off okay so you just make the uh, to a two inch format or you might have a three inch uh, hole and basically just all you're doing is opening that hole and and just keep blowing some of the, the dust off and 9 out of 10 most of the dust will blow off and will drop out again just use a little bit of an extension piece with a straw or something long enough so it doesn't blow the, the straw off and all that and it just gives you to that hard to reach places all right? and just keep blowing it that way it's just something that a lot of, it, a lot of the uh, YouTube video guides out there don't highlight that but I've noticed that 
uh, it does actually remove some of the dust from the other side uh, so if you do have dust particles that don't appear to have moved that could be the problem unfortunately um, if if it's mold or there is something that's actually dislodging there then I would not recommend that you strip the, the, the lens element apart to get to the other side uh, some telescopes you can, some telescopes you can't unfortunately with this one uh, there is a way but you need specialised tools and the problem is because it's an ED um, lens element because the parts are mated together in a certain way you do not want to disturb the air gap of that telescope in other words you do not want to move the position of those lenses because uh, if you do that you are going to throw the, the collimation of the, uh, the refractor and the optics might not perform as they should and again a lot of the high end uh, refractors like your triplets are even more uh, uh, even more accurately machined. In other words, if you slightly take these lenses apart and you turn them around and then fit them in, they seem to fit but they don't. And basically these optical um, lens elements are tested because they're highly machined, highly grounded and polished to a certain way that they're all mated to a certain point. And they are tested by a special machine that will test for uh, the optical quality of the of the telescope and if you adjust those um, where it's been adjusted you will throw off the, op uh, the optic um, intolerances and it will affect your images so I would not recommend you to strip these these lens elements apart now if it's an acromat it'd be fine but the ED doublets and your uh, triplets Never ever do that. Uh, if you've got problems, uh, something like that with mould in there, or you've got um, something that's got trapped and dislodged, then take it to a telescope specialist or the manufacturer and to do the job for you. So, again, after a quick brush and a blow, you can blow it again if as much as you want. Okay, the reason why you're doing that is to make sure. That if you're on the second stage of your cleaning and the second stage means that if you've got fingerprints on there or you've got pollen particles in there you want to try and remove as much as that's possible uh, again if you live in sandy conditions you need to make sure that there's no sandy gritty particles dislodged into that um, lens cell uh, a reason why you do that, if you continue to the second stage by using the cleaning lens solution and then trying to wipe it down, clean and all that, you will have more chance of um, scratching the lens. So make sure you can get as much of that part particle debris as you can. So even if you are blowing forever and ever, by all means do it, especially with sand. Unfortunately, I've never, I, unfortunately, I've never had that problem with sand, so I'm, I'm lucky. However, if you do live in an area with sandy conditions, in an area full of desert or something like that, make sure there is no sand particles in on that lens. You cannot afford to scratch it. So, after a few uh, quick applications and a quick brushings like so and you're happy with it and there's no particles that's going to uh, scratch we're going to use a uh, my trusty uh, clean border wonder fluid uh, cloth and then what we're going to do we'll put that to one side and we're going to use the, the fluid and then what you're going to do going to pick her up carefully and then using the spray a good six or eight inches apart okay and then just do one little square and that's all you need to do seriously that's all you need to do is one little square oh, that's all it takes sounds a bit perverted but hey 
Anyway, then use a cleaning cloth. Now, avoid using the circular motion. Always go and wipe off once. Find another clean part, twice. Find another clean part, three times. Okay. And again, keep adjusting it. Like so. And what you're doing is you're cleaning the area off. Like so. Find another clean part, one stroke. You can do other set techniques as well. You can do that set technique here, where you just do one part, then one part here, then change cloth, one part here, one part here. But I always find one single wipe like that is enough. One single wipe, find another clean pattern, uh, part of the cloth, and, then, and that's it. If you get any hedges um, where the smear marks are still there and you can't reach it, get a lens pen using the carbon tip end, circle it apart and then where it's smeared just use a lens pen on this side like so and just quickly just rub off what's there, what's trapped. Right so, that's all it takes, it's that simple. Okay, and again, take, check on a strong light, like so, take on a nice strong light, and if any of you missed, just a quick wipe where the bits you missed. And then shine it against a nice bright torch, check. Any areas and that's it that's basically that's all you got to do that's all you got to do it's that simple uh, again that's that uh, with telescope now ready for another two or three years before it needs cleaning and that's that's how often I clean mine and that's the, re the only reason for that is I've always put my dust caps on when not in use. I always make sure that the moisture is completely evaporated during cold nights or when nights are dewy. And once you're done with that, uh, you basically uh, make sure you check your lens cap yourself. And again, using a broad brush, just remove any loose particles, right? Because whatever you cleaned on the lens, if this is dirty, this will also land in uh, dust particles and all that in there. And again, use a good old camel hair brush for that as well, if you wish. And just give it a good quick brush like that. It's simple as that. And then once you're happy and it's clean, you then put on uh, the dust shield. And then that's it. That's basically what it is. And then just put in uh, your caps from the other side so you protect it. And that's basically what you gotta do. Now, have you noticed? Um, there's one thing I haven't. I just forgot to describe to you guys and girls is not all telescopes. Uh, you uh, can just slide on the dual cap. You know, this one you can slide it up and down. But, um, top tip: if you've got a dual shield, no matter what, uh, if if you're one of the lucky ones have a retractable one, always clean the lens element when the dew shield is fully extracted down, like so. It just makes it a little bit easier to clean and you're going to do it right and you're not going to miss any uh, parts of the, the, the objective lens. Unfortunately, if you have a refractor that has a dew shield that's completely fixed, um, don't worry. Um, uh, particularly for certain branded scopes like your Skywatcher refractors, uh, Acromats or, or your ED uh, 80s, uh, they're, all, they're all fixed, but usually to remove them they're just a push on fit. So basically you can unscrew an actual dual shield and just pull it apart. Just pull it apart and then you can get to the, the lens uh, element a lot better. Uh, again, not all telescopes uh, have uh, the push-on dew shield, they may be screwed on. 
So you might need to uh, look at your owner's manual or telescope brand and just double check how it's fixed. Uh, 9 times out of 10, uh, a lot of good refractors are retractable uh, dew shields or the fixed type which are basically just pushed on onto a nice neat flange here and basically you can just unscrew it, pull it out and do it that way. So again, this, this, this optical device now is now ready to be used again for um, my imaging session. So that basically concludes uh, my uh, video guide on how to clean a refractor. I hope this has helped you guys. Uh, please feel free to ask any uh, questions regarding this video guide and, uh, and keep posting those great images. Uh, we've got some amazing images out there at the moment and some of the guys who've uh, just started out are now producing these excellent images and I'm, I'm over the moon. So thanks for, for supporting uh, Astronomy for Beginners and uh, look forward to uh, another next guide. So thanks again. Thanks for watching and clear skies to you all.